presented by Edge Radio. Hello and welcome to a media shower on 99.3 FM Edge Radio. I'm here with Lockie and I'm Quam and today we'll be discussing a couple shows we've enjoyed, a recent one named Invincible and some old ones if you will, particularly for me personally a far classic for the year 3000 if you will, the old fabulous Futurama. Perfectly. So uh, today they've announced or they've begun releasing season two, part two of Invincible. Neither of us have seen it yet. I I refuse to watch season two until they've fully released it in its entirety. Well, as for me as a whole, I'm just catching up. What do you think so far, Lockie? What did you think of season one of Invincible? And maybe give us a little premise about what the show's about. Well, I don't really want to give out too much, but despite the fact that it has been out for quite a while now, I'll try to give a short rundown as the best I can. So think of it as like a uh, evil Superman who is basically a power-hungry war criminal who basically has the power to just about destroy planets if he so chooses to. But he has a normal family, and he has a son named Mark, and he, well, takes the mantle, I wouldn't say a mantle, but more or less a superhero of his own, being the fact that he is what's known as a Viltrumite. Absolutely, it's an animated superhero show on Amazon Prime. And it's a bit of a, almost an anti-hero show, I would say. And we're seeing these popular, popularized a lot. The Invincible and the boys. And bro, to keep this trend going. Um, so what, what do you think so far, Lockie? Have you enjoyed it? Well, from the short time that I have been watching it so far, I am actually have been enjoying it a lot. So much so that... I've actually somehow convinced my own mother to watch it with me, and she is considered to enjoy it. Very nice. So gets it, the mum's tick of approval. Gets, gets her approval. Brilliant. Even with the whole extreme amounts of gore, violence, and everything that is in the show, she somehow could handle it. I will say that's probably... Um... I don't know if you agree, that's probably one of my favourite parts of this show is that... Oh, I can agree, definitely. Even though it's animated, it, it feels almost like a Japanese anime with the intensity of violence throughout. The um, level of detail in certain shots of how far they go to explicitly show how graphic and violent it can truly be. Yeah, they don't shy away from it at all. No, it's, um, no, no, no. Defi- quite the opposite, actually. Um, so it is from, um, it was originally released on t- in 2021 um, on Amazon, but it is from kind of a bit of an unknown author. Um, his name is, right here, uh, Robert Kirkman. Yep, that's right. Um, and yeah, I think this is really the only major comic book he's done that's kind of taken off. Um so it's kind of good to see an indie comic not made by the classic Marvel and DC really find its footing. Well, obviously, having your resemblance of your DCs and your Marvels, but just not as, like, well, yelled out, let's say. I guess another parody show would do so. Like, The Boys, have they done something like that? If, if I'm as... If I'm correct. Yeah, it's um, almost they're almost a parody, I guess, of the genre, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of take what we're used to and kind of tip it on its head a bit, which in a way can work, of course. Absolutely, I think I mentioned it earlier, but you know, I think the trend has definitely died down. Superhero so movies and shows aren't doing as well, so they all need this twist. To kind of pull us back in, we need to see something new. And to be fair, if 
people did just go ahead and watch the same thing over and over, I think we would have been sick of the superhero genre altogether. And I'm glad that we still somewhat have a little tightrope that we can somewhat go on, but for some people out here, you viewers at home, depending on how you look at it, it could be either really good or not the greatest decision some of these companies have made. But enough about that. Yeah, we, m we might conclude there and we'll come back with a short review after this ad break. You're listening to Edge Radio. Welcome back to Media Share on Edge Radio 99.3 FM. Where we do the host of the most with the most media showering of them all. Of course. And now we'll be talking about Futurama Locker. You've said you've been really watching this show. You want to give us a quick review and recap? Well, in the year 1999, a man by the name of Philip J. Fry is in the middle of a pizza delivery schedule during New Year's Eve. Addressed to Icy Wiener, he gets... He accidentally puts himself into a, uh, fro oh, what was it? Frozen cryogenics? Yep. 1,000 years later, and he's in the year 3,000. So, there's, uh, this show, they've announced two more seasons coming out, not for a while yet. What do you think of the old seasons, Lockie? Does it hold up? Well, personally, I believe the old seasons have hold up immensely very well. And especially with the episodes that I've been watching, it actually has been rather been impressing me quite a lot, I have to say. I've always been a fan. It's one of those shows that I can never binge watch for whatever reason. It just sometimes feels a little repetitive. Or I can't quite get into it, but I like the one-off episodes. I could probably watch one a day for a, a year and be happy. Um, right. What do you think compared to other animation comedies? Is this one of the better ones? Well, I think I see it as like, I found my Simpsons, if you will. Even though they're not like the post-nuclear family trope or however you say it. It's got that uh, timeless kind of uh, kick to it. So I take it you'll be looking forward to the upcoming seasons and bringing it back, Hulu is? Well, they have, correctly, but... I personally have not heard or watched any of the Hulu new versions of Futurama, so once that happens, I have to wait and see. I think they've announced two seasons, and they'll be airing uh, not till 2026, so we've got oh, a while wow. to wait anyway. Um, I thought they would have... They know how to speed run animation now, but I guess they're proving me wrong. Maybe they've got new approaches. Yeah, absolutely. New advances, new techniques. Well, Who um, knows? It's definitely a show I think is... Uh, have lots of little political and cultural jokes. I think it's kind of relevant to the time. Yeah, um, it was certainly a show of its time, I yeah. should say. So, it would be interesting to see what they do with... Yeah, with it in a bit more of a modern era. Yeah, how they would take... Their old style of comedy, but putting into a more modern day approach. Mm -hmm. So that'd be interesting to see how they would take it. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we're running out of time here today. Um, thanks for listening to Media Share on Edge Radio 99.3 FM. You can always blame Hobart Traffic for making us late and unacquainted <laughs> for your listening needs. Awesome. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to Edge Radio.